episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince. I'm an Army veteran. And today we'll be talking about if a claimant dies before a VA decision, what happens? But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content for Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit for more content. And to all veterans who would love to share your story or resource for veterans and non-veterans who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we got that out the way, let's get into this topic. So again, we're talking about if a claimant dies before a VA decision, what happens? So what I want you to understand is that the Department of Veteran Affairs provides compensation and pension benefits to eligible veterans. However, if a claimant dies before a decision is made on their pending claims, there may be back pay available to surviving spouses, dependent children, or to individuals or companies who paid for a last cost. If a veteran was already receiving VA benefits and a new claimant was for a reevaluation or a secondary service condition, the surviving spouse or dependents will receive one month's worth of disability income for the month of death of the veteran. This is not an incurred benefit, but a benefit guaranteed under the regulation. If the claimant is a single veteran or a surviving spouse or dependent child of a veteran, there is generally no occurred benefits that would be made for a pending claim to members of the family unless there is one or more other remaining dependent children of the veteran. However, if other individuals or companies has paid for last cost of the decreased claimant or were owed just debt, any potential occurred benefit could be paid to these entities. The regulation specifies that certain educational benefits, certain back payments, allowance will be paid regardless. Evidence on file with the VA is also further defined in the adjudication manual M21-1. If the death occurred and there was no evidence in the file at the date of the death, that would have entitled the claimant to any rating or decision based on the information in the file, there would be no benefit. If at the death of the claimant, there was evidence in the file to award a decision and entitlement under existing rules and incurred benefit would be paid to anyone of a hierarchy of survivors, such as the veteran spouse, children, or dependent parents. There is no provision under the rule to pay the estate of the claimant if there are no surviving in the hierarchy above. However, there is still potential for payments from a portion of the current benefits or all of the current benefits, which is called a reimbursement of current benefit. The amount which could be part of or up to the total amount of current benefits is paid to other persons not in the hearts. Claims for accurate benefits can be made using VA Form 21-601. It is advisable to include the deceased veteran death certificate and all receipts and paid invoices that the person paid on the behalf of the deceased claimant. Overall, it is important for surviving family members and individuals or companies who paid last costs to understand their potential eligibility for back pay and reimbursement incurred benefits in cases of a veteran death before a VA decision is made on their pending claims. So in a nutshell, what it's stating is that if you are the surviving spouse of a veteran that died, and they have an actual date in the system with an intent to file or you filed or the veteran filed for benefits, then there's potential that you can get back paid. If the veteran didn't have any date that was initiated to them through them filing for VA benefits on the VA.gov website or with an organization with a pending status, then you won't be entitled to any potential back pay or payment. I know that sometimes this can be a touchy subject, especially when, you know, at the time when the veteran died, you may not be seeking for anything but, you know, healing and, you know, comfort during your time of need. So I really wanted to just show, you know, 
you this information so that you can, you know, better assist yourself and your family as y'all try to move on. And I wanted to show you the actual website. Again, as always, I'm going to put it in the description so that you can actually go on this actual website and you can see this information for yourself. And it has a bunch of information that would, you know, be a benefit to you. And I'm also going to put that in the description box along with all the information that I've presented to you today. So if you need any assistance with this stuff, please go in the description box, read up on all this information, or even in the comment section, ask me questions. And rest assured, I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you email me, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll ensure that I do my best to make sure that you have this information so that you're not lost or you're not alone doing this process. Because again, I understand that it can be a trying situation, especially if your spouse or your parent, you know, whoever this person may be to you, as far as, you know, somebody's close to you as a veteran died. And you know what I'm saying? You're stuck with a bunch of questions that were left unanswered because, you know, in most cases, some veterans didn't want to go down to the VA. So they didn't even try to apply for benefits or, you had a veteran who may have applied, but they didn't know that, you know, the next day was going to be their last day. And, you know, now you're in a situation where you're trying to get closure for your situation. So as always, man, this has been another episode with your boy, brother Vince from Vet Talk. My good people, Vet Talk out. <laughs>